Hello friends and welcome to Live from the City Opera House, it's story time with me, Ben Whiting. I'm so excited to be a part of the show where every week we're gonna be exploring a new theme, reading a cool book with a special guest, and we're going to have an activity that you can participate in from home using supplies that I'll give you at the top of the show, or if you want to, you can go online and download our activity sheet. Now, as we all know, when you have friends who help you out, it's important to thank them. And we wanna thank some of our friends who've made this show possible. Traverse City Area Public Schools, thank you. Uh, Newton's Road, thank you, as well as Tattle, thank you. Now, who's ready to hear about the book we're gonna be reading today? One Plastic Bag by Miranda Paul. And the activity we're gonna be having, can you guess what we're gonna need? A plastic bag or two. Also, you might wanna grab some basic arts and crafts tools you would use when having fun in your arts and crafts sessions at home. So scissors, glue, construction paper, etc. Everything we talk about today is gonna to be based around that theme. Now, who's ready to have the book read? Dr. John, take it away. My name is Dr. John Van Wagner. I'm the superintendent of Traverse City Area Public Schools. And this is an opportunity for me to read a book. Uh, I think that it's very important that as a community we embrace literacy. And I'm really excited about this book today. This is a book that I, uh, I believe uh, is, a, is a great piece of uh, literature for children to read. Uh, it really takes into account the idea of uh, the impact on our, our environment, uh, making sure that we're being good stewards of the earth and that we are uh, not wasting and, and polluting um, in ways, but also a part of that idea of recycling is reuse. How can we take something, uh, in this case, such as a plastic bag and make it into something that is very useful and something that people would actually want? So. Um, I believe that's really important, and I think that uh, through the reading of this book, uh, students can understand culture in another land and, and the diversity in people. Um, and I really enjoy this book because it takes those things and put those together. It allows uh, students to think about how might I take something and, and do some type of environmental program where I can take something that's garbage or something that's being thrown away and reuse it. Uh, to make better for uh, themselves or our community and, and the world as a whole. So the book that I have today uh, is a book called One Plastic Bag. Um, it's uh, Isatu Sise and the Recycling Women of the Gambia um, with Miranda Paul and illustrations by Elizabeth Zunan. So again, One Plastic Bag. Nayu Gambia. Isatu walks with her chin frozen. Fat raindrops pelt her bare arms her face hides in the shadow of a palm leaf basket, and her neck stings with every step. Warm scents of burning wood and bubbling peanut stew drift past. Her village is close now. She lifts her nose to catch the smell. The basket tips. One fruit tumbles, then two, then ten. The basket breaks. Isatu kicks the dirt. Something silky dances past her eyes, softening her anger. It moves like a flag flapping in the wind and settles under a tamarind tree. Isitute slides the strange fabric through her fingers and discovers it can carry things inside. She gathers her fruits in the bag. The basket is useless now. She drops it knowing it will crumble and mix back in with the dirt. Four goats greet Isitute and gra grandmother Mbambe emerges from her kitchen hut. Hurry in before the rain soaks your beautiful Mumba. Isatu scurries in and grandmother serves spicy rice and fish. Rain drums on the creaking aluminum roof. I broke your basket, Isatu confesses, but I found this. Plastic, grandmother frowns, there's more in the city. Day after day, Isatu watches neighbors tote the things in bright blue and black plastic bags. Children slurp water from Wanjo from the tiny holes poked in clear bags. Market trays fills with min minties wrapped in rainbows of plastic. 
The colors are beautiful, she thinks. She swings her bag high. The handles break. One paper escapes, then two, then ten. Isatu shakes sand off her papers. Another plastic bag floats by, and she tucks her things inside. The torn bag is useless now. She drops it to the dirt, as everyone does. There's nowhere else to put it. Day after day, the bag she dropped is still there. One plastic bag becomes two, then ten, and then a hundred. Plastic isn't beautiful anymore, she thinks. Her feet step away down a clear path, and the thought floats away. Years pass, and Isatu grows into a woman. She barely notices the ugliness growing around her until the ugliness finds its way to her. Isatu hears a goat crying and hurries towards her grandmother's house. Why is he tied up, she says. Where are the other goats? Inside, the butcher is speaking a low voice. Many goats have been eating these, he says. The bags twist around their insides, and the animals cannot survive. Now three of your goats and so many other goats in the village have died. Grandmother and Bombay's powerful shoulders sag. Isatu must be strong and do something. But what? Isatu's feet land her to the old ugly road. A pile of garbage stands as wide as grandmother's cooking hut. Mosquitoes swarm near dirty pools of water alongside the pile. Smoke from burning plastic stings her nose. Her feet back away. Goats stamper, scamper by. The forage through the trash for food. Her feet stop. She knows too much to ignore it now. Holding her breath, she plucks one plastic bag from the pile. Then two, then ten, then a hundred. What can we do, Isatu asks her friends. Let's wash them, says Fatim, pulling out Omo soap. Merim grabs a bucket and Incha fetches the water from the well. Peggy finds clothespins and they clip the wash bags on the line. As the bags dry, Isatu watches her sister crochet. Can you teach me? Whoa, yes. Her sister shows Isatu the stitches, then hands her a metal tool. Isatu's fingers busy themselves in and out, around. Jer Jeff, thank you. Isatu finds a broomstick and carves her own tool from its wood. What's that for? Fatim asks. Isatu pauses. She and Peggy have an idea, but will their friends think it's crazy? Will the idea even work? Nervously, she explains the plan. One free friend agrees to help, then two, then five. The woman cuts bags into strips and rolls them into spools of plastic thread. Before long, they teach themselves how to crochet with this thread. Naka Ligabi, says grandmother. How is the work? Nadanka, Nadanka, answers Isatu. Slow, some people in the village laugh at us. Others call us dirty, but I believe what we are doing is good. The women crochet by candlelight, away from those who mock them. Until a morning comes when they will no longer work in secret. Fingers sore and blistered, Isatu hauls the recycled purses to the city. One person laughs at her, then two, then ten, then... One woman lays Delazi coins on the table. She chooses a purse and shows it to one friend, then two then 10. Soon, everyone wants one. Isatu fills her own purse with Delazi. She zips it shut and rides home to tell grandmother she has made enough to buy a new goat. When she passes by the pile of rubbish, she smiles because it's smaller now. She tells herself one day it will be gone and my home will be beautiful. And one day, it was. The end. Mrs. Bignett here with her family to walk us through the activity and the design thinking principles that they learned. How about you guys introduce yourselves and take it away? Hi, I'm Katherine McNitt. I'm a teacher at Westwoods, like you just said. And this is my daughter, Olivia, which is, since we are family, which is why we're not wearing masks, but we do have them with us when we do get up. Um, today, we are repurposing plastic bags, just like ISO2 did in the one plastic bag. So what we have here, you can do them in different ways. There's a lot of things you can do with plastic bags. We found through a lot of research that you can actually take plastic and turn it into something called plarn, which is like yarn, and then you can turn it into baskets and purses like Isatu did and different wallets and any kind. So there's a lot of different ideas. What we've come up with today is two different activities, one for each type of 
interest or learner, um, Olivia is actually gonna make you a bracelet and then she's gonna show you also how to make a jellyfish in a water bottle. So we also have different examples to show you. Um, I'm gonna let Olivia take it over and show you exactly how she's gonna make a bracelet for any size hand. She has examples here that fit kid sizes. She also went as small as fitting little dolls. Mm -hmm. It could happen, yep. So I'm gonna let her show you exactly how to make a plastic bag bracelet. So what you have to do is you have to cut four pieces of thick plastic bag. I already cut three. And then once you've gotten three done, you have to cut one more thick piece. So Olivia also learned that you can use the blank side of the bag or you can use the color side because the colors actually show up on your bracelet with whatever kind of color you use from the plastic bags. So we decided to put ribbon in because it was just a white bag, um, but you can also use different colored plastic bags to make your bracelet kind of pop too. And I'm going to help you get set up just a little bit. And after you've gotten your four pieces of plastic bag done. Perfect. I'll take this one. You away. put some tape on the, the table on the sticky side up. And you put all your four pieces of tape or plastic on your tape. And I need some more. Yep. We'll put it right underneath, right there. And then once you've gotten that done, you pick some ribbon or yarn to do, to get. And then... Oh, I took your scissors. <laughs> there you go. You need the scissors and cut it. And like Olivia said, you can use yarn, string, ribbon, any sort of color to kind of weave in. Then can you, then you put the ribbon string. So why don't we show them? Or yarn can you turn it on show? the tape. Perfect. Then you, you start to flip it over. Then, if you know how to, if you don't know how to braid, you can twist it. But if you do know how to braid, then you grab two, the two pieces of plastic and the other two, as in the bunch, and then the string as the one side. Then you start to braid or twist. And you want to make sure you keep it tight. And what did you discover last night is if you don't know how to braid? If you don't know how to braid, you twist, like I said. Yep. Want me to hold it for you? There you go. Now Olivia is making a bracelet, but some extensions you can do on top of just doing the bracelet is you can even make, like I said earlier, plarn and make these longer where you can make a jump rope. Um, and we put duct tape on each end, which is the black part on the end of each of these bracelets. You could also make it into a headband we noticed last night as well, or some other days that we were making these. Um, and if you don't like the black, there's other colors of duct tape you could use. What we're gonna try to use this morning so that it's clear is just our scotch tape on the ends of them so that we can put them together on your wrist. Okay. All right, so you can stop there. And we'll put this back down, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the tape and we're gonna wrap the top end of it just like so. And then you just cut off. So we've got the tape and you cut off at the end. So now one end is sturdy. And on the other end, we're going to take the same tape. Now another skill you can put into here is measuring. You can measure someone's wrist. You can measure the length of how long you want the bracelet to be. And then you just take the other piece of tape don't quite wrap it around all the way, right? And then we'll cut the end. And can I put the bracelet on you? And we'll put a matching bracelet on Olivia's hand. 
and it goes right underneath, kind of like a little clasp. Like so. So now she has two bracelets and they match too. So she has two different bracelets. And you can use, like we said, we can use duct tape, you can use regular scotch tape, any kind of tape you can find, anything you have in the house. So that's one of our fun projects. The other one we did was for maybe kids who don't want to make a bracelet. You could also make a water jellyfish, a water bottle. As you see, we have different sizes of water bottles. You could do big or bigger. You could also do little teeny ones. Okay, so then when you flip them upside down because plastic floats, your jellyfish kind of move up to the top. Okay, so you can be creative with this with your colors. We just use dye, so Olivia will show you. She has a full water bottle. So you get a water bottle full and you put some two dots of dye in. Then once you've got in once you've got your dye in you start to mix it. Yep. And then here's your plastic bag. And, no, then, yep. Go ahead. and then you get your plastic bag and cut a big jellyfish. Yes. And what we didn't try is you can experiment with this one as well. You can use permanent markers on your plastic bag and you can decorate it. And like I said, with the other plastic bags, you can use colors. You could use the words to make your jellyfish kind of fun. Really big. Yeah. We yeah. notice the bigger the jellyfish, the better. So this is my jellyfish. Mm -hmm. And then once you've gotten your jellyfish cut, you, you crumple it up and put it in your water bottle. And then put your cap back on and start to shake it. Then you have your jellyfish. And you can put it upside down. Mm -hmm. And spread up, and it will go to the top. Yeah, and with these activities, you can make them your own. These are what we figured out kind of works best for us and what we enjoyed, but you can take these. You can do it your own way and add your own little flair onto them and also use something different with plastic bags, too. There's a lot of great ideas that you can come up with as well. So thank you for joining us. We hope that you take these and do your own. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. It was great to see the projects that you created. But we also want to see the projects that you created. So be sure to take a photo of your project and email it to us at info at tcaps.net. That's info at tcaps.net. The first person to send us a photo will get a free copy of today's book, One Plastic Bag, autographed by today's special guest, Dr. John, as well as myself. That concludes today's show. We hope you had fun, and we hope you'll continue to join us every Wednesday morning in August at 9 a.m. Of course, if you can't make it then, you can watch all of our episodes on demand online. I'm Ben Whiting, and until next time, keep learning, keep telling great stories, and keep having fun. Take care.